Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about adding a tow hook to your Soarcraft model. Making, installing, testing, and flying using a bungee launch. A great way to get some altitude at a park or a field. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out our website for this model and others, as well as printing configurations for different materials. Eventually, these files will be included with the airframes, but for now, you can find them on the website under Accessories and just click on the button to download. Except for the Juicy, these parts can be added to any of the Soarcraft airframes. I'm going to add it to this Pika I previously built with lightweight PLA. It is a simple three servo build using the new MH32 two servo wing. It flies great and this tow hook will add less than 10 grams to the total weight. This all started when I ran across my 30-year-old bungee launcher. It needs fixing. I could buy a new one, but doing a quick Google search for a bungee launcher, I didn't find the smaller launcher like I wanted, so I decided to rebuild mine. Lots of info online. I found this nice sizing chart, and I'm going to build the smallest one, and easily found some inexpensive material on Amazon. With 30 feet of bungee, 200 feet of polyester kite string, I reused my ground stake, an old filament spool, and a three quarter inch key ring with some tape on it to act as a streamer. Unrolled and pulling it back 50 paces, and I get two to two and a half kilograms of pull, which should be perfect for a sub 500 gram plane. So, being the engineer, I had some design goals I wanted to meet. It needed to be strong enough, even for the lightweight PLA. I wanted it to not be too heavy. And I wanted to be able to retrofit it to an existing fuselage. So we're going to start off with just testing the hook. Using a 3 quarter inch key ring and a digital force gauge, And it's the key ring that deforms first at 5 kilograms. Well, I have an old panel nut that can take more abuse. And everything held firm up to 30 kilograms where my bench started moving. So the external hook is plenty strong. So I built up a test fuse with the PLA fuse doubler and the carbon rods inside a foamed lightweight PLA wing saddle made from the bamboo arrow foaming lightweight PLA and a modified wing root held on with nylon wing bolts that will hold these nice metal bolts so I can hold it in my vise. So now the whole system has to take the load. This design can easily hold six kilograms, but let's see how much it can take. <clears throat> so my best pull of 24 kilograms deformed, but did not break mm. anything, even in the nice. foamed lightweight material. I'm happy with that. Next up is how much does it weigh? Over 10 grams, but just barely. I bet I can do better than that. The metal hardware is 4.3 grams. 
Replaced with nylon found at Ace Hardware. The nylon comes in 3.5 grams lighter, but are they strong enough? Not bad, let's try that again. The nylon seems more than strong enough, not breaking at 25 kilograms. Though it does deform slightly. Altogether, the parts weigh 6.4 grams and more than exceed the strength requirement. Lastly, the fuse stubbler needs to fit to the wing saddle opening so it can be added to an already built fuselage. Pushing down on the sides snaps them under the carbon channels. Once in place, the doubler can be moved into the desired position. It turned out pretty good. Could this design be better? Sure, but it meets all the requirements I have for it right now. So let's build one into an airframe. For printing, I use Orca Slicer and the Sorecraft configuration for regular PLA. I load all of the STL parts from the tow hook folder. For this, I don't need the extender, but I will cover that later. For now, I can turn it off, arrange, slice, and print. Plenty strong and only 5 grams of material. Check that the carbon channels are clear and the screws fit the holes. File and drill as necessary for a slip fit. For adding this design to an assembled fuselage, remove all of the radio gear and servo wiring from the wing saddle area. The push rod should be fine. Insert the doubler sideways and twist straight. Then get it to lay flat. The side should be under and around the carbon channel. If they're not where they should be, press down until they snap in place. A little wiggle helps too. In the end, it should look like this. And with some thumb work, it should move front to back for positioning. We want the tow hook near but forward of the CG. Forward gives stability. Closer to the CG can maximize launch height. I use close to 30 degrees, but I show in the instructions what 30, 25, and even 20 degrees looks like for the mount placement. I eyeball the back doubler mount hole alignment with the front wing bolt hole and the wing saddle cutout to set the location. It does not need to be exact, but should look something like this. Add the carbon rods. I use tweezers to get them started, then slide them forward with a finger. Both rods should reach the fuse radio tray overlap, where they both just sit on the inside surface. When you're happy with the placement of everything, glue in place with thin CA on the doubler and the carbon. Drops on the back and the front. You can use epoxy on the front if you like. I mentioned a third part in the file set, which is this. I call it the hook doubler extender. It is not necessary, but can be used to hold the front sections of the carbon. Front holder on the slope radio tray, or front support for adding this hook to a power pod fuse. I thought I would include it just to have it available. With everything glued in place, I use a pin light or small flashlight to see the hole locations from the bottom of the fuselage. Use a knife or drill bit to open up the holes. An X-Acto works easily on the Aero PLA. Now you can add the nuts to the inside. 
hold them in place with a finger and install the exterior hook. Before tightening it down, make sure it's straight. You can add glue if you want, but it is strong enough without and is removable and replaceable if anything happens. Okay. All right, let's go try it out. I'm at my local park and luckily nobody else is here because I need the whole space. Even though this bungee launcher is small, I need most of the length of this park to stretch it out to launch into the wind. But it should be good for 150 to 200 foot launches. Everything is on and ready to fly. Nose up and a light toss. And away it goes. With some practice, I was able to get some good launches. I even found some thermals. It was a good time at the park. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and see you in the next video.